Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about the measures of center, more specifically the mean, median, and mode. Let's get started. Before we get to the first example, let's talk about what exactly a measure of center is. A measure of center is just a measure that describes a typical value for the data set. In other words, if I gave a test and I've got 100 students and I have all the scores for all of the students on the test and I'm wondering, well, how did they do? How did my students do on that last test? It's going to be really tough to tell when I have a hundred numbers, a hundred grades, uh, just looking at them all together. So instead we use things like median, mean, and mode to get a better idea of a typical value. So instead of a hundred numbers, I might have the mean was an 85, 85%, right? That's the average. Okay, that gives me a better idea of how the students did. So that's what measures of center are. They're just taking the data set and finding a typical value, kind of somewhere in the middle, uh, to give you a better understanding of the data. So let's get to example one. All right, here's example one. What is the mean number of messages sent? So here's our data. Uh, so we're finding the mean. That's going to be the first measure of sensor that we're going to talk about. So first, what is mean? Another word for that is the average. Finding the mean of a set of data is the same thing as finding the average of that data. And to do that, all you do is you take the sum of the data, you divide it by the number of values. Okay, so you add them all up, that's the sum, then you divide it by how many pieces of data there are. So let's do that. Um, first thing, what I like to do. It's a good thing when you're doing things like mean, median, and mode. The very first step is to put all the data in order. So if I'm looking from least to greatest, well, 82 is my least. Um, then let's see. Mm, we've got 90. And like cover 85. And finally, 125. Just double check. I've checked them all. So I'm just going to double check by counting them. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay, so I got them all. They're in order. That's the first step. Now I'm going to add them. I'm going to find the sum. I've got 721 as my sum. Now I just divide it by the number of values. Again, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 721 divided by seven. When I divide, that's going to give me 103. So my mean is 103 text messages. Again, that's like the average. 103 text messages. Here's some to try on your own. All right, example two. We're going to have three parts to this example in A, B, and C. So first, A, identify the outlier. Well, here's our data, uh, the height of ponies in inches. First, what is an outlier? So an outlier, let's write this down, is a data value that lies kind of outside all the other values. So what that means is an outlier is a data value that is either a lot greater than all the other values or a lot less. It's kind of outside the other ones. Uh, that is either a lot greater or less than the other values. Okay. That's an outlier. Okay. So first, like always, I'm going to put my data in order, and that's going to help me see if there's any outliers. 
just to double check, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2 is 10. Okay? So I've got all my data in order. Now let's take a look. If I wanted to, I could make a dot plot, and that could help me see if there's any outliers. But hopefully, looking here, it should be obvious. Can you see what the outlier is? Well, if you notice, we go from 28 all the way up to 37, 37, 38, 39, 40, 42. Here, the data is all clustered pretty close together, except the 28. The 28 is quite a bit less than all the other values, which means my outlier is 28. Okay, let's try part B. Okay, part B is just find the mean. So again, the mean is the sum of all your data values divided by how many values there are. So if we add all of this up, and hopefully you get 379, that's what I got. Uh, so that's the sum. I'm going to divide that by how many there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 values, which is really nice because divided by 10, I can just move the decimal place once to the left. So my mean then is 37.9. Remember my units, all these values were inches. So 37.9 inches. Okay. So the mean of the heights of the ponies is 37.9 inches. Let's try the last part, part C. All right, here's part C of example two. Find the mean again, but this time without the outlier. So if we remember, uh, our outlier was 28, so I'm going to find it without that. That's We're not going to include that. Okay. Um, so now if... Again, find the sum of all the data, right? 379 minus 28, because we took it away. I'm going to get 351 uh, divided by. Now, notice there still aren't 10 values. We got rid of the outlier, so now there's only 9 values. So I'm dividing by 9. And let's see, 9 into 35 goes 3 times. Then there's 8, 81, 39. Uh, and that's, again, 39 inches. So that is my, uh, my mean without the outlier. And notice they're different. And the reason, if you think about it, the outlier was a lot less than the rest of my values. So when I included the outlier in when I was calculating the mean, you can think of it as it's bringing down that mean. It's bringing down the average. If we don't include uh, the outlier, Notice our mean was, was greater. It was higher. So keep that in mind. When you're calculating mean, the outlier, if there are some, can really affect your mean. They can either make it a lot greater than it probably should be or a lot less than it probably should be, depending on where that outlier is. Okay. Here's some more to try on your own. Okay, example three, find the median and mode of the bowling scores. So we've already talked about one measure of censure, which was the mean. The other two we're going to talk about today are the median and the mode. So first, let's discuss what exactly is the median. And the median is just the value in the middle. When you have all the data in order from, left, from least to greatest, the value that's exactly in the middle is called the median. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so let's write that down. The value in the middle when the data is in order from least to greatest. Okay, so let's write that down. And and I always remember it. Median's the only one out of mean, median, and mode that has an I. And I think I for middle also has an I, so that can maybe help you remember. Um, good. So that's the median. Well, how about the mode? Mode is pretty simple. The mode is just the most common value, right? Most common value. And again, mode has an O, I think O for most, most and mode. Uh, so most common value. You can have one mode, right? You can have more than one mode. If there's um, a couple that are both occur the same amount of times that are much more than the others, uh, you can also have no mode. And no mode would be where there's exactly one of each value. 
right? No, nothing is more than the others. Then you would have no moat. Um, so that's what we're finding. First, the very first step, remember, put the data in order. That's always our first step. So let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five times two is ten. Yes. Okay. Now, all I need to do for the median is find the number that's exactly in the middle. If you have an odd number of data values, right, it's very easy uh, because there's going to be one of those values that's ex exactly in the middle. Think about your hand, right, your fingers. You have five fingers, which is why you have a middle finger, right? Odd number, this one is right in the middle. You've got two to the left and you got two to the right. Uh, so if you have an odd number, it's very easy. You can find the one that's right in the middle. Some people like to kind of cover up as they go from outside to inside or cross off, work their way in the middle. Um, but if you have an even number, we won't have a data value that's exactly in the middle. So this is what we're going to do, right? We've got 10 here. So if I'm crossing them off, work my way to the middle. Notice now I've got two values left. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the value that's exactly in the middle of those two. Okay? And to do that, sometimes you can do some mental math and just know. Another way is just to add them and then divide them in two. So 135 plus 145 uh, is 280. Divide that by two and I get 140, right? And if you look, 135 and 145, yeah, 140 is exactly in the middle of those two. Uh, so 140 is my median. It's exactly in the middle, okay? Let's check out the mode. Now again, the mode is the number that occurs the most often, the most common number. So notice all of these ones only happen once, but then we get to 160 and there's two 160s. So that is my mode. Mode's gonna be pretty quick. So the mode is 160. Uh, also, with mode, mode is kind of nice because that's the only measure of center that you can use when you have data that's not numbers. So if you have, if you're doing a survey and you're thinking, okay, what are students' favorite colors? Uh, and they give you all their favorite colors, blue and green and purple and things. You can't find the mean of all the colors. You can't find the median of all the colors, but you can find the mode, which one occurs the most often. So keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking of kind of what measure of center to use when, okay? Uh, here's some to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.